over there. Hey there, fellow gardeners. Amy here with Garden Up Landscape. And today I want to talk about this monstrosity right here that we recently discovered on a, the back corner of a client's property. So this particular weed uh, is a class B on the noxious weed list in several states and at least two provinces. Um, and it's one that at least our noxious weed control board has been all up in people's grills about this year. I've heard se from several clients who, were, when this was discovered on their property, got letters of like, you must control your weeds, you know, and all that stuff. So I want to talk about what this is, um, why noxious weeds are a problem, and then I also want to delve into this and see what it takes to get this thing gone. So this weed's common name is common bug loss, and its scientific name is Anchusa officinalis. It has a very textured leaf. It's kind of fuzzy, but it's pokey at the same time. So it's got some pubescence, almost spiny pubescence on it. And the leaves, this is like sandpaper, like a cat's tongue almost. Um, the flowers are what's really interesting though, and these are what is the distinguishing trait for all the plants in this family. This is in Baraginaceae, and all the plants that I'm aware of in this family have the type of flowers that uncurl, so they almost unroll. They start as this tight little roll of flowers, and then they unroll like the scroll of a fiddle, just like West Coast Fiddle Neck, okay? Same family, Baraginaceae. And then they bloom at the end. This particular weed, the flowers, there are five petals, and uh, they are fused at the bottom, so they're, they're not separate petals all the way to the base of the flower. Uh, and they have a little tiny, you know, flower parts in there. They each have the potential to produce four seeds, okay? So each one of these flowers will open up and produce four seeds. So you can see with all of these flowers everywhere, how quickly this plant can get out of hand. So in my research for this weed, to try to figure out exactly which one it even is, I did pull up the noxious weed list and I printed the brochure. This one is common bug loss, Anchusa officinalis. There's also annual bug loss, Anchusa arvensis, and it looks very similar to this. It's really hard to tell them apart, but um, Anchusa arvensis has even more grit on the leaves, even, even more spiny painful looking. And then there's also blue weed, which is another common name for this. So they're, they're used interchangeably. If you Google blue weed or bug loss online, you get pictures of both. So they both have the same common names, which makes it really confusing as far as which one you actually have, right? But the bottom line is all three of them are on the noxious weed list. So all three of them need to get gone. So let me talk about what noxious weeds are. The word noxious means not native, okay? So it's literally just a plant that did not start here. It was brought from somewhere else, which wouldn't be a problem, except that there are no natural predators to control that plant. Nothing in our environment here naturally eats this plant. Some species might grow to eat it and, and learn to love it or whatever and control it eventually, and that's great, but some do not. And there's some weeds that are even poisonous to local wildlife. There's, there's all kinds of different reasons why noxious weeds are a problem. Um, but the main part is they outcompete because they don't have something to eat it and control its populations. They will outcompete our natives and they will start to take over which messes with local ecosystems, and it's just a big problem all around. So it's really important if you have a noxious weed on your property, you've got to get it under control. Um, and like I said, I've had several clients this year that have told me that they've got letters from the weed control board getting all up in their business about this particular plant being on their property, and that if they don't control it, they will be getting fines. My plan is I'm gonna cut back all this top growth and put it straight in my bucket because like these seeds are ready to drop. I want to spread these seeds as little as possible. And then as soon as we find wherever this plant is coming from, then we'll know where to dig and we'll be able to, you know, unearth the roots. There's also a bunch of uh, little babies of this over here, little seedlings. They haven't quite grown yet. So we'll probably dig those up first to see what we're dealing with 
There's another smaller plant over there, same thing. We'll dig all those up first so we know what to expect when we get down to the base of this one. Okay, so let's go. All right, whenever you're digging on something that's a taproot, you want your shovel to go straight down into the ground so that you don't accidentally chop off the taproot before you get to the bottom of it. I think I finally got the whole thing. All right, quite a long little bugger in comparison to the size of the plant. So the, the root is the same length as the leaves are in diameter. So that's, uh, <laughs> that's gonna be fun. Oh, what I just found, that is a creeping root. All right, we're gonna try putting some water in this hole to see if, the, see if it'll loosen up the soil at all. Uh, so here's my plan with this. I've cut off all of the top growth. The flowers and everything are now on the tarp in a pile. The bees are still enjoying the flowers. Obviously, they love this plant. But um, so I'm going to trench because this is not one plant. I have confirmed this is several dozen plants. The seeds just all fell really close together. So I'm going to trench along this side. And then we're just going to dig and try to get under as many of those roots as we can to try to get this whole thing out. And uh, stay tuned. We'll do a follow up video next year uh, to see if the uh, weeds came back from the roots because I'm pretty sure some of them will. So we're trying three different techniques to get rid of this. First one, obviously we dug it. Uh, the second thing is we put cardboard under some sections, but we did not cover the whole area. So we'll see if it comes up again around where the cardboard is. I will follow up on this video again uh, next year. So make sure to subscribe um, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss that when I post it next year. The third method of control we're using is the client wants to just spray this. She's got a chemical uh, that she'll use. I don't do that because I'm an organic company, obviously, but, uh, but she's gonna just spray this section here and see what happens to it. Make sure to hit like to tell me you like this video. Leave a comment below if you have an idea for a gardening video you'd like to see me do. I wanna thank my assistants. I have a lot of assistants that helped me on this project, Kelly and Shelly and Jackie, and I think Bo helped on this too, right? Mm -hmm. I also want to thank my client for letting me film on site on her property. And uh, on that note, thanks again for watching. I will see you in the garden. Bye.